Okay, back again. Let's uh, let's keep cranking and see if we can't finish this up. Let's see. Uh... Right. So the first thing we want to do is to just quickly take a look at the BPs here. Uh, we can see so uh, Soviets keep saying Soviets. Iranians and PRC are at about one fifty two, one fifty one, and the US. I think this might have been before we did the count for me because I'm at one twenty. What's that? Um, I don't know. It's got to be five there. One twenty five to 150 something. So that's all, oh, it's a 30 point difference. So that might be about right. So the, the difference really bounced around from about 36 down to 20, 22. You can see here that the uh, VPs per turn were uh, very, very close. So there wasn't, uh, there was no a, a, a advantage to either side in this, this particular turn. Post nuclear re release, both the uh, Commonwealth and French uh, go up to level four in terms of their commitment. So all of the reinforcements that uh, we weren't going to receive because we had didn't have them at that higher commitment level will start from basically turn zero, uh, counting forward now, and we'll receive a lot of uh, extra special forces, some extra supplies, some extra missiles, some extra troops, some extra air and even uh, some naval elements right at near the end of the game they'll start to they'll start to roll in you can see my missile missile points are very low but i think my cruise missiles are still up around 14 at the moment you know i've been saving those husbanding those for uh, shots at the balance of the rest of the ssm sites that we need to take care of uh, as part of the victory conditions for next war in iran all right so I think that probably covers what's going on here. Generally speaking, you can see this is a storm turn. So really nothing is going to happen other than uh, it's an opportunity for the Iranians to start attacking stuff uh, fairly aggressively. Uh, I pop another nuke to slow down the movement through the mountain and rough terrain uh, and stop the flanking by uh, all these heavy Iranian units that were coming through. You can see here this brigade five, four, eight, but with only an ER of five. So but pretty tough. And this one under here was a six, seven, eight, I believe. And another nuke there I popped, I popped off. So I've still got two or three left, but uh, trying to break the supply chains for the Iranians and reduce their effectiveness. All of my, all of my stuff gets spotted. And uh, once again, three, three ballistic missiles target my CBN, and I am fortunate that they are not hit. All of these units are out of supply with the blue markers on them. And uh, we ran out of out of supply markers in our, in our kit bash uh, uh, set that we had. Uh, I lose my MEF again. And you can see it's a bit of a cluster here. Now, one of the things that did happen uh, in a I think it was, uh, I'm not sure if it was a clear or overcast turn, but both my B1 units were splashed. And that really hurt the uh, on the ground effectiveness of the air. I lost uh, two of my best bombing units. Uh, pretty painful. These, these bombing runs were largely ineffective just because of the weather. And there you can see the overall picture of what's going on. Little bit, little bit messy, but I, I've got uh, control of this island here. Although he's just gone and landed uh, more units in in that zone on the left hand left hand side there. And let's see. Uh, I'm just trying to see right here. A little distracted with a cat trying to do something stupid. And. Yeah, it looks like we've got some creature in the house. Okay, well, we're going to have to deal with that in a minute. I think it's a wizard. And now I'm super distracted. Guys, stop it. Uh, that's not going to work, is it? Well, I guess we have this lizard in here. We'll have to work that out in a minute. Because I really would like to try to get through this video. So as we... As all, as all of this starts to unfold, you can see that all the blue markers are my out of supply units. And we've dropped a number of nukes going around here. Uh, top of turn six is where I decide that it's time for me to withdraw all the land troops that I can 
try and rescue the Marines that were in the mountains up here around this area. Where are they? They're in here, right here, right there. Try and weasel them out this way if I can, but it's going to be really difficult. And we're probably just going to, we're going to lose that Marine force. Uh, and we don't get a lot of rebels. As you can see down here, there's this uh, replacement uh, marker there. Uh, but that does pick up on turn seven. We start getting two replacements to turn sort of one. So that'll help. Uh, and I'm just going to skip over that for a second. That's playtest chart that uh, is used for uh, tracking the, the number, the, a, a wide range of activities within the gameplay. And uh, it allows the play, the play testers to be a little bit more effective with the reporting back to the uh, back, to, back to the developer to Ralph. All right, uh, missile strikes on my airfields again. So he's really just pounding the crap out of me at this point. And I'm, I'm not having a whole lot of fun at this point, but it's uh, it's really difficult at all because I went to, I just went too early coming in on this. Look, if we look at this section of the map here, from here down to here is where I was, uh, you know, trying to land and, and capture this port. He destroyed that port with a nuke, a nuke means there's really no point in being here anymore because I can't effectively uh, conduct operations. So I decided, to, <clears throat> I decided to pull these units out, get them back into the Indian Ocean to Diego Garcia, rebuild some of those forces. I've got the time to do it. It's a 16 turn scenario. And we're gonna, we're just gonna ground, we're gonna pound these guys from the air for an extended period of time, another two or three turns. So right down from turn six through turn nine or 10 or maybe even 11. And then what we'll do is we're gonna try and capture uh, the Persian Gulf area, control of this Persian Gulf area, and then hit this mother load of VP locations here, these little cities, this island is uh, a mother load of uh, uh, source for uh, VPs as well. Meanwhile, identifying all of the SSM sites. For some reason, I had, I had it on, in my mind that I had to actually kill all the SSM sites, but you don't. You can run the gauntlet. So you just need to reduce them to the point where they're not going to be a massively difficult uh, set of uh, obstacles to overcome. Uh, in the in the gameplay. All right, so that might be the last photograph, I think. No, a couple more. And there's my poor Marine surrounded, getting the snot bombed out of them. Uh, we try providing air support to them uh, as we're, they're attacked from multiple directions. You can see they had to retreat. They lose another step and lose a step in the attack. They're isolated. It's the frozen chosen all over again. Uh, here I am uh, now reloading. Uh, I he load some forces out. I'm now loading stuff onto CVNs. Uh, sorry, onto my amphib units. I've got the SAGs and the CVNs sort of spread out along the coastline, provide uh, support and attack attack any units that come this way. So I've got one. I've got these units here and these units here. Uh, these guys will. One of these two can. Uh, air mobile out, but the others uh, are going to have to amphib or die, and they will probably die. Uh, and I think that's where we ended up here. We had 166 VPs, and then 139 for the 139 for the US forces. And we called it there just based on time, not anything else. I had to leave and we, we started play 7 a.m. on Saturday morning and uh, wrapped up at about 10 or 10.30. And there was a lot of, you know, shooting the shit and talking and hanging out, uh, of course, uh, as you do with uh, with cons like that. So look, the, the long and the short of it is uh, a very You'll be very familiar with the mechanics coming into next war Iran. What you may not be familiar with is while you have a significant amount of capability, you have so many competing priorities that it's a, a choice matrix that, uh, and a set of compromises that need to be made as the U S forces. Uh, but then also there are some really nifty and, and neat opportunities for the Iranians to actually cause some real pain 
for the uh, for the allies in their efforts to reopen the streets and and sort of restore the world order world balance as the case may be so the iranians and the prc can really cause some significant problems as we saw for the allies and the allies have to be a smart player and a patient player and a thoughtful player uh, as the vps are going to drive some behaviors and as i mentioned earlier on some of these the vp locations the, the points that will be accumulated for them will change but it will still drive a very similar set of behaviors that i think the idea if with any change would should be or needs to be uh, uh, or will probably be based on the conversations conversations i have with uh, ralph and mitch would be that you know maybe we don't want the allies to destroy these and if we don't want them to be destroyed then maybe there should be some vp accumulation for capturing those sites intact uh, or if there's a strike one marker or a strike two marker on them then maybe there's less vps accumulated so now you've got an, you know, even an even more subtle set of decisions to make in terms of how much damage do you want to inflict upon these things to capture them or uh, prevent VPs being accumulated by the uh, by the Iranians. So anyway, I just thought I'd uh, share that with you in this little overview. I know it's a, a set of four videos here, but it, there was a lot going on and I wanted to show them the photographs so you got a feel for the gameplay. Uh, if you've not played before, you know, by all means, you can play the standard game before you jump in the deep end. And I think you'd be just fine with this system. It's not a at that level it's not a complex game and it's not complex for the advanced game either it's just there's a lot going on and a lot of choices need to be made and also you know little things like selecting as i often forget to do selecting the right aircraft to use for the right mission uh, if you've got high quality pilots you want to keep them for very specific missions where their pilot skill will be of use uh, they're not useful for ground strikes, so don't send them on those, but they can be useful for wild weasel uh, missions. So those sorts of things matter. That's an attention to detail thing. It is a little bit of a min-maxing effort that needs to go on. Uh, if you if you start looking at your uh, opportunities within the, the, the scope of the game and the, and, the, and the VPs that can be accumulated and all the rest of it, you really need to be thinking about what's my game plan and what am I going to do for both sides. So anyway enjoyed it a lot i'm actually going to be setting up using this vassal playtest module and not continuing gameplay but starting from scratch and looking at a persian gulf first strategy seeing if that can make any difference for the us in terms of uh, their success rate and uh, the the way in which we uh, can more effectively shape the battlefield, as uh, Mitch said, uh, to my advantage before I go storming in there with uh, boots on the ground. All right, folks, all the best. I hope you enjoyed that little uh, look at uh, Next War Iran. Ciao.